Nikon have just announced about 24 hours ago at the time of this recording a brand new camera system simply nicknamed or I'm sure it's not nicknamed simply named one there are two models there's the V1 which I'm personally nicknaming the veteran one and the reason for that is because this is supposedly targeted at the more experienced photographer. You've got things like a viewfinder. You've got things like full manual control. You've got things like an adapter that will allow you to use your legacy Nikon glass from your older SLR cameras. You've also got better build quality. The Nikon V1 is constructed of a magnesium alloy um, body, though not entirely. It is um, still better built than the J1 over here, which I am calling the Junior 1. The other reason I'm calling it the Junior 1 is because supposedly this one is targeted more for the person who is who has a point and shoot but wants better image quality. You can see that it's obviously available in a, in a hot pink. Excuse me. It's also available in um, deep red, blue, bright green, yellow, all sorts of colors. And as you can see, the lens matches the body. That's the first time I've ever seen this in something other than a black uh, camera. The J1, the uh, excuse me, the uh, veteran one, the V1, will only be available in black or white which I believe, again, is a sign that is, this is definitely more of the, for the enthusiast. Let's take a look at this lens. This is a Nikkor lens, which, you know, as you, as you know, they have um, very, very high quality lenses. So just slapping the Nikkor name on it should be enough to make it interesting. But let's take a look at that 2.7 times crop factor. This is a 30 to 110 millimeter lens. So if we do the math, we have an 81 to 297 millimeter. Yeah, that's right. And then we have a, whoops, a 27 to 81 millimeter. So this is a 27 to 81, and then a an 81 to 297 millimeter. So if you were to put these two together, which you can in a dual lens kit for approximately $1,100. Or at least that's the case with the vi with the uh, veteran one. I have not priced the junior one because of the two, the veteran one's the one that's got the, me the most excited. It'll be interesting to see how it does. But that $1,100 is quite steep. At the same time, you do get two lenses, so it'll be really interesting, again, to see how this does. The 2.7 times crop factor is thanks to a 1-inch CX sensor. It's brand new. Now, let's take a look at this. The APS-C Nikon DX, which is the green one, and also used in the Sony cameras. Let's compare that to a 1-inch Nikon CX and to the 1 and 2 thirds, sort of the, um, like the cream, sort of pale cream yellow, and then the pink 1 and 2 thirds, 1 and 2.3 inch sensor. I'm sorry, one, yeah, one and 2.3 inch. Um, the one in, ah. whatever, the sensor that's in a point and shoot. I'm, I'm sorry, it's late and I can't think. Um, so anyway, one inch Nikon CX versus one half point three inch uh, point and shoot sensor. You can see that there's a clear, obvious difference. However, if we compare it to Micro Four Thirds, the one inch, and the eight, and the again, and also the APS-C, you can see there's a significant difference. So why did Nikon do this? 
Supposedly, it was a marketing decision not to kill off their SLR sales. But also, if we take a look here at the specs, this is rather interesting. It's a 10.1 megapixel, which is more than enough uh, for the average photographer, unless you're going to be printing to a billboard. Um, you can see it's got raw facilities. Then we get again. We have that 2.7 times crop factor. This is I've I've never seen this. This is the autofocus area here. 135 points. That is crazy. If you have auto area autofocus enabled, it's 41 points. But that's still I mean 135 points. That is crazy. And the other part, if we take a look at the autofocus system, it's a hybrid system. Phase detection and contrast detection. This has never been done in a mirrorless system. In order to have a phase detection system effectively, you have to have um, the mirror. Because what happens in a traditional SLR is, if you're, in, if you're in live view and you use your phase detection autofocus, what happens is the mirror flips down to hide the sensor so that the sensor can go ahead and send, send the data on into the processor for an autofocus reading and then flips it back up really, really quick, really, um, you know, really, really convenient if you're um, pressed for time. The contrast detection on a focus system, it's um, slower, and the upside of that one is you don't lose the view, the view of what you're about to shoot. Most systems on the mirrorless side are contrast-based. This is the first one I've ever seen to have both. So we have our ISO up to 3200, which um, depending on where you are on the ISO scale, you may think that kind of weak. Exposure compensation, pretty uh, standard. Metering, pretty standard. Now, the shutter speeds, 1 4,000th to uh, 30 seconds in bulb is not um, big. But if we take a look at the electronic shutter, one sixteen thousandth of a second. That's the fastest shutter speed I've ever seen. Modes. These uh, this specs, by the way, are for the Veteran 1. The modes on the V1 are programmable, auto, with flexible program. I have no idea what that means. Um, then you have your PASM modes. Now, what's interesting about the PASM modes, and I think I'm about to answer my own question here. Um, you put the pro, you get, you put the camera into essentially what is automatic, programmable automatic, and then through the menu, you can select your shutter aperture or manual modes. Which, like I said, I think I just answered my own question. Uh, shooting modes, you got your still image three by two. Um, smart photo selector, I believe what that does is takes many shots and then lets you select from the best five. White balance is pretty standard. Uh, picture control system, nothing really interesting there. The burst mode is another interesting part of this camera. If we take a look here, if you set it to, I guess in Sony's terms, what would be considered the speed priority mode, 10, 30, or 60 frames per second. And this is with the electronic shutter. Otherwise, 5 frames per second, which is not bad. Um, connectivity, you've got a DC input combined AV and USB output. You've got your USB 2.0, um, HDMI, and multi-accessory port. You've got your standard memory card. You've got an EN EO15 battery, and it weighs 294 grams. Now, regarding that accessory port, that's this cover here on the top. Apparently, Nikon has gone the Sony route and gone with a proprietary system. You cannot, if you have any flashes, for example, you cannot use them with this camera. Now, I'm trying to think who the one system is targeting, supposedly. Excuse me. Because if we take a look at the sensor size again, the pink point-and-shoot sensor versus the Nikon CX, that's certainly quite a bit, quite an upgrade. 
But if we compare it to traditional DSLR sensors and even a micro four thirds, um, you know, it's, again, big, big difference. I think what's going on is Nikon, especially with the Junior One, are going to be marketing this towards people who um, want better picture quality, but they don't necessarily care how it is achieved. And again, we're talking the Junior One here, not the Veteran One, because um, the Veteran One has actually got me scratching my head. But I can pretty much surmise, surmise the... Uh, uh, the junior one. We'll get to the veteran one in a moment. So the junior one, um, again, people that want better image quality but don't necessarily care about the specifics would probably leave their cameras on auto all the time um, and want a step up from a point and shoot but at the same time don't want to go to a DSLR while for those who are this is why I've got myself scratching my head on the veteran one because if this is supposed to be for, for more experienced photographers It'll be interesting to see how this plays out because if you want depth of field control, you're probably not going to get as much as you would with a standard Nikon DSLR. Um, the controls, from what I've seen, again, it's menu-driven to access the PASM modes. There's no rotary dial um, on the top. There is one. I think there looks to be one on the back. You do have quick access buttons, so that isn't a step above Nikon's entry-level DSLRs. But... For somebody who knows how sensor size plays a role in pictures, and not just size, I'm talking about overall performance, uh, noise reduction, and noise um, profiles, and so forth. I'm really curious if that type of person would go for the V1. Um, basically, it's a great big question mark. The cameras will be available at the end of October. The other question mark that I have is the price. The the Junior One is supposed to be around $650, I think. The Veteran One is much steeper. You're looking at about eight, or I'm sorry, $900 for a single lens kit. You're looking at about $1,200 for a dual lens kit. Now, yes, for $1,200, you do get two lenses. But what else could $1,200 buy you? Well, if you've already got a collection of Nikon glass, and you've got, say, a D5100 or a D80, um, you may as well just go for the D7000, because if you're looking for a control, whether this one will offer it remains to be seen. I think it will, but it won't be in a traditional sense. So we'll just have to wait and see how this does. Thank you for watching. Comments are welcome, and have a nice day.